So hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Andrew Rosner. And uh, as Jahan uh, mentioned, I am the CEO and founder of Media Options. Uh, we are the world's leading domain name brokerage firm since uh, several years and uh, are responsible for some of the world's uh, largest and most important domain sales, including, uh, uh, like you said, Zoom.com, Prime.com to Amazon, X.com to Elon Musk. Uh, and just uh, last week, we sold NFT.com, which was a domain we owned. Uh, we just brokered the sale of Crypto.org uh, to Crypto.com and uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in, in additional domain sales. I'm also the uh, publisher of DomainSherpa.com, which is uh, the legacy uh, uh, domain world's uh, leading educational and entertaining uh, video podcast. Uh, and I am very excited to be here with the uh, Handshake community, uh, uh, of which I consider myself a member. So I'd like to start out just kind of telling you guys a little bit about my journey in domain names. Uh, my journey started in the late 90s. Um, despite what Jahan said, there are, there are quite a number of, of people who are earlier in the domain game than me. Um, but once I recognized uh, what this industry was and could be, uh, I backed up the truck and uh, I went all in. And uh, you know, in the early days, I uh, I quickly realized because I, I when I when I started to take it really seriously, I realized that I was a little bit late. I was sort of in the second or third wave, and um, I started uh, Media Options as a domain name brokerage firm uh, with the sole intent of creating cash flow in order to continuously acquire more domains for our owned and operated portfolio. And that sort of continued to be the business plan till this day. Um, I, you know, today our business is a little bit more complex and uh, I wear many hats. Uh, you know, I have a, the domain investor hat where we own, let's say, roughly 6,000 domain names in uh, on the legacy uh, root zone, uh, primarily .com. But uh, we also uh, have invested uh, pretty heavily in .org and some .nets. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I do consider myself to be TLD agnostic, um, I basically am concerned about where can I make money, you know, and ultimately you can make money where there's demand. And um, if you've got something that you think is the best thing in the world, but nobody knows about it, it's actually worthless. And so um, I use that as a segue uh, into how I came about being interested in Handshake. Um, I've got millions and millions of dollars invested into legacy domain names, and I still consider them to be some of the most valuable investments in the world. I think that domain names have a very, even legacy uh, TLD domain names have a very bright future ahead of them. And um, I'd like to share with you sort of my thesis around uh, my investments into Handshake and other decentralized uh, domain name protocols. Um, as well as sort of what I think the future might look like from my perspective. Um, I'd like to start with what makes a domain name valuable. And I think that we can, we can discuss what's made domain names valuable up to this point and then sort of theorize what could make decentralized domain names valuable in the future. Up to this point, uh, I think that if you boil down what makes a domain name valuable, it ultimately comes down to utility. And in the legacy internet, the primary utility, in my opinion, um, uh, fairly well-informed opinion, but my opinion is that uh, the primary function of a domain name in terms of its value proposition is the re continued reduction and perpetual discount on customer acquisition cost. And so whether that's for a blog or e-commerce, it really doesn't matter. You're just trying to get eyeballs. Or, or, or a consumer, you know, whether that's a reader, whether that's a consumer, it doesn't matter. It's about attracting traffic to your website. And ultimately, that's what a domain name is. Domain names are the first and to this day, the only bridge between the physical world and the digital world. And uh, one of the things that's been bothering me a lot lately as, as the whole NFT space has, ex you know, exploded um, which I know very well, as I said, I just sold NFT.com for a quite sizable uh, sum. And uh, but it's really been chapping my ass, so to speak, that, you know, I feel like the overall crypto space and the NFT space and, 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 and just the broader, let's say, 
digital asset space isn't recognizing that domain names are ultimately the original NFT. And I think we need to, as a community, turn that into a meme and, uh, and, and, and just hammer the whole world with that. Domain names are the original NFT. Um, and why that's so important is that I think one of the greatest problems that the NFT space faces uh, is this bridge, this digital bridge. How do you bridge the physical world and the digital world? And I think domain names solve that problem. That's a topic for another day that I have a lot of thoughts on, but um, coming back to value, um, this utility function is again, what drives the value of a domain name. And in the legacy route, as I said, that primary value proposition has been reducing the cost of customer acquisition. And so what does that mean for the future of decentralized domain names? Um, we don't yet have a Google, uh, I believe I, I couldn't tell you what offhand what it is, but I believe there are, there, there, there are, um, you know, um, up and coming search functions and, 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 uh, on the handshake blockchain, but ultimately, um, a domain name is a way of getting somebody with intent to the best solution for their intent, whether that's again, commerce or information or whatever it might be. And in one of the things that's really exciting to me about the future of decentralized internet is the proposition that domain names increase in utility tremendously, maybe by an order of magnitude or, or greater. Um, I don't know what the exact number is, but I believe it's a, a roughly a billion people that own a, one or more domain names in the world today. And I think that uh, over the next 10 to 20 years, um, with the advent of decentralized domain names and all that comes with that potentially, I think that we will get close to uh, the entire population, at least the entire global population that's connected to the internet, will likely own a domain name. And the reason for that is that I think that um, the future of domain names, uh, and I'm probably telling my grandfather how to make babies here, but the future of domain names um, is going to be far more than just uh, a way of connecting somebody who has search intent with um, the solution to their intent. And um, I think that as we move into decentralized identity, data storage, wallets, payments, and the like, um, again, we're, we're adding an order of magnitude increase in the utility of a domain name and thereby potentially the value. And so I think um, what we as a community need to focus on is that utility. And um, I think, how do we get, you know, I, I, I always like to ask, what does winning look like? And I think winning looks like, you know, Burger King is, has their, you know, corporate domain name on, on a decentralized blockchain be it handshake or any other. And in order to get there, um, I think the linchpin is of course, browser adoption. And then if we ask ourselves, what is the greatest hurdle to browser adoption? I think it's perception, um, which I think is something that maybe people miss in, in, in the community from, from, from listening to other you know, conversations and having conversations with people in the community. I, I think the greatest hurdle that we face and, and, and the number one challenge that we need to overcome is being seen. Um, we need to be seen as innovators and not as a nuisance. And I think um, the key to that is uh, self-governance and, and, and trademark abuse and, uh, and the way that we as a community deal with that. I think that, you know, uh, as a lot of people, uh, one of the things I've noticed in the, in the handshake community is that you have, and I, I think this is incredible. I love that we're getting an entirely new pool of people into the domain name space because despite, I, I know that there's sort of this radical belief in the, in, in, in all of the, the decentralized domain spaces, whether that's unstoppable or handshake or ENS doesn't matter. Um, you have this sense of, you know, we are the future and um, better tech, a uh, better solution. This is what makes sense. And I agree with all of that. But there are trillions of dollars in marketing, advertising, and tech spend um, in the legacy root zone. And with that comes a lot of power. And um, I think that we need to try and play nice with that community. And I think that 
in the domain investor community or, 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 or the domain, let's say, enthusiast community, um, I think we're all one. I think that it's, you know, the legacy root domainers, handshake domainers, unstoppable domainers. I think that, you know, there's strength in numbers. And um, I think that if we as a, a, a more global community, you know, are focused on innovation and um, and we self-govern our community to, um, let's say, make it easy for the latecomers. The latecomers are going to be the, the incumbents, right? The, the latecomers are going to be the people with a vested interest in the root zone, um, including myself. Uh, uh, but luckily, I've got an open enough mind to have seen this early on um, as a threat. And, and which brings me sort of to my thesis. Um, so just to sort of finalize that thought, I know I've gone a little bit on a tangent there. Um, I, I do think that we as a community really need to be adamant about helping brands um, to protect and obtain their decentralized domain name and not sort of uh, use it as blackmail. Uh, I, I know obviously that it's very tempting, particularly in a decentralized domain name, to say, oh, I've got .IBM and, you know, I'm going to hold them over the coals and this is decentralized so the UDRP doesn't work and all these legal mechanisms that they would generally use to, you know, uh, 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 be the arbiter of, of, of good faith here. Um, they're useless. But that is, um, that's a good thing, um, you know, uh, which I'll, I'll get to in my thesis in a second. But it's also a bad thing because it will very quickly lead to the powers that be, meaning the brands and the lobbying agencies and the government and the regulatory bodies, um, seeing us as a nuisance. And so if we don't self-govern the community around trademark abuse and trademark infringement um, and content to an extent, um, I, I do fear that we will never get the browser adoption that's required in order to get mainstream adoption. And so I, I would be very laser focused as a community on that objective. I think that, you know, if browser adoption is the linchpin to mainstream adoption in the future, I think if we ask ourselves, you know, what are the hurdles to achieving that? Um, I think this is the main one. And I think that if we can, as a community, come together to, you know, overcome that, that, that hurdle, uh, I think that we have an extremely bright future. And that leads me to my thesis. And so my thesis is I've got a tremendous amount of resources tied up in this legacy domain portfolio, which, again, I believe will continue to appreciate in value. I think that the future, um, you know, looks like a merger of the, the, the current legacy root zone. I'm not going to say that it's you know, low hanging fruit. I'm not going to say that this is obvious or easy by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think that simply because decentralized root zone is better tech. It's a better philosophy. Um, it's more equitable. Um, and it stays off some of the, uh, you know, objections and, and um, opportunities for corruption that, that may exist in the legacy uh, route. And so um, I'm very excited about the future of a decentralized internet. I'm very excited about the future of decentralized domain names. Um, I look at this, um, so I'm an investor in Unstoppable Domains. I'm a, a very active investor in, in Handshake Domains. I'm sort of placing bets ar around the decentralized uh, internet. And I look at this as, as an insurance policy for myself personally, because of my legacy investments in, in, in domain names, um, I see this as an insurance policy against you know, future disruption. But I also see it as an opportunity. I see it as an opportunity for innovation. I see it as an opportunity to sort of fulfill what I've always believed to be um, the promise of domain names, which is that bridge between the real world and the digital world. And as more and more of our lives and more and more of global commerce moves to that digital world, those bridges become more and more important. And I think that people are not necessarily um, clear about the potential of domain names. And I think that when we dig into what can be done with these things, you know, it, it, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, um, I think that, you know, in the future, you know, every, whether it's digital art, it, you know, everything that these NFTs represent will be tied to a domain name. And the reason for that is that it just increases its utility. It increases, um, you know, uh, what, 
how you interact with these things. Um, and so um, I'm investing in handshake domain names, um, uh, both as an insurance policy um, uh, against, you know, when I say an insurance policy, I think, you know, markets are forward looking. And so the moment that the mainstream, the moment that, you know, the brand lobbies, the moment that the, 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 the legal world around intellectual property recognizes that, that, that a decentralized alternative may be the future, not will be, but, but even may be, that uncertainty will immediately impact, you know, the, 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 the legacy domain system and the value of those domains. Now, where I see a bright future is that I think that at some point in time, I can, uh, or the powers, you know, it's meant to be a grassroots, you know, bottom up organiz organization. And when I think the community recognizes how much better this tech stack is, um, I, I do believe that the legacy internet will migrate to a decentralized alternative. Now that may be handshake, that may be something else. Um, but I think that what handshake has going for it that is really exciting. And the reason I'm here today is its community. And it's incredible. I mean, the, the handshake community is just incredible. It really is on Twitter, on the forums, you know, the conversations I'm having with some of the people in the space. You know, I had people, you know, just donating me and saying, hey, look, I got your, your you know, Andrew, your dot Andrew Rosner, you know, your, uh, your, your company names, you know, people just giving them to me because they said, you know, we're so excited to have you in the community. And, you know, people are looking out for each other. And that's awesome. Um, so, uh, I, I, I lost my train of thought there, um, but the the co community is ultimately what is going to drive adoption, and so it really is very exciting to be a part of this community. And um, uh, you know, I, I think I wanted to sort of um, we'll go into a Q and A. I actually wanted to. I was supposed to mention that at the beginning, but we'll, we'll have a minute for uh, uh, some Q and A at the end of this. But I wanted to make one observation, and that observation is um, that one of the things I've noticed in the community is, is a mistake, what, what I perceive to be a mistake. And I'm not, you know, the, the, the final authority on these things and, and, and we don't know how the future will evolve. But I think that a lot of people are making a mistake about, you know, um, left of the dot and right of the dot. And what goes to the left of the dot doesn't necessarily make a great TLD, meaning what makes a traditional domain name, uh, the SLD, the SLD is the part that goes to the left of the dot, and the TLD is the part that goes to the right of the dot. And so what makes a great domain name on the left of the dot doesn't necessarily make a great TLD. And so when you're making investments and you're evaluating, you know, what handshake domains to buy, um, I wanted to point out to people that you know, you should be thinking about keywords and acronyms and things that lend themselves to um, subdivision. OK, and and so one, one of the early domain names that I owned that, that I always loved that I think is a great example of this is, is mushrooms. So I used to own mushrooms.com. And I always liked mushrooms because I thought it lended itself great to subdomains. And I think that the most valuable domains in the world are the ones that lend themselves to that subdomain. And um, it, because each subdomain represents an entirely new category or business. And so, you know, if you take dot mushrooms, for example, and we say, you know, let's say dot mushrooms, I, I was in the auction and I actually missed the end of it. So probably one of you owns dot mushrooms, dot mushrooms. Uh, if you think about dot mushrooms, you can have portobello dot mushrooms, oyster dot mushrooms, magic dot mushrooms. You can have, you know, an endless number of varieties of mushrooms, eat dot mushrooms, calls to action all different kinds of things. Um, and that makes a great TLD. Uh, dot insurance, right? You've got car dot insurance, auto dot insurance, health dot insurance, buy dot insurance, find dot insurance, quotes dot insurance, lots of things that lend themselves to subdomains. If you take like, uh, I don't know, Red Apple, okay, uh, for example, we own redapple.com. Red Apple does not lend itself to subdomains, right? Dot Apple could lend itself to subdomains. Um, you know, obviously that's going to be a brand TLD for, for Apple, but let's ignore that for a second. You know, dot Apple would be like dot mushrooms. You could have red app, red dot Apple, yellow dot Apple, eat 
dot apple you know whatever maybe dot apples is even is is uh, even better in this case but um red apple doesn't lend itself to being a subdomain uh it doesn't lend itself to being a tld you know what do you put to the left of the dot if you have red apple to the right of the dot right and so um i'm not saying that it can't be done and if you're a brand called red apple then you could use dot red apple uh as a brand tld and you could have home dot red apple and shop dot red apple and products dot red apple and so i'm not saying that it's you know a horrible thing but you're relying on somebody being called red apple to come along and saying i want to own my brand tld and you know if we evaluate so first and foremost that sort of lends itself to this self governance you know it sort of butts heads with this idea of self governance in the community around um you know having people um uh uh let's say proactively not infringe on trademarks um and then secondly uh you know it's really a lottery ticket you you you're relying on a company being called red apple wanting to own their decentralized tld and so um you know you can make that bet but it's a longer bet than something like adopt mushrooms which is going to have universal appeal to anybody that's in that business and um or that just wants to adopt mushrooms as a brand and so i have always focused on you know my investment thesis in 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 the legacy domain names in this area of domain names um has always been i want broad appeal the broader the appeal the better the more potential use cases the better the more utility the better the more things that lend itself to the left of the dot the better these are all the things that are going to drive value and so i think it's really important when you're evaluating your 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 you know um uh domain investment decisions it's really important to focus on does this make sense to the right of the dot does this lend itself to lots of alternatives on the left of the dot for example last names um uh i know you know jahan is is particularly interested in 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 you know uh family names and um uh, you know having that to the right of the dot makes a lot of sense there are going to be endless numbers of people with a different first name that lends itself to the left of the dot now uh, i own drew.com and i love having drew.com um but i also really like to own rosner.com and i've never been with the guy the guy that owns it just simply won't sell it to me he's like a local politician and he uses it and he won't sell it to me but having dot rosner which i do have in 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 handshake um is even better because it lends itself to andrew.rosner or drew.rosner or i can have any of my family name you know family members can have their own domain name at.rosner and they can have their own email address at.rosner and um and that has far more utility than dot and if you have it please contact me if you'd like to sell it uh dot andrew as well but uh, actually i might have gotten that one no i don't think so so um uh what i'm trying to just explain is is you know a, a sort of a a thought process around you know the evaluation of these things cuz i am seeing a lot of people spending a lot of money on things that would be awesome to the left of the dot but don't necessarily lend themselves to being on the right of the dot and so i just want you know the more success everybody in the community has the more successful handshake is going to be have and so it's i think it's just really good if 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 you know people are um taking a strategic approach to their investment decisions in the handshake and um yeah with that uh i don't know do we want to turn it over to a q and a yeah sure let's do it i know i'm a few minutes short of uh um the expected time frame here but i feel like there's maybe some good questions from the audience yeah uh my be my connection um my connection so okay so there was a question here it says does the insurance policy perspective apply to ican tld owners claiming their reserved hns tlds and the alexa top 100 reserved list claims do you think there are any good objections to claiming so um Does the insurance company sort of apply to I can't TLD owners claiming the reserve? Just TLDs. So um, 
yeah, I mean, I think, um, okay, so this brings up a good point. So I, I, I think this cannot be overemphasized. The idea of name collisions is the single most important concept names in general. Um, at the end of the day, the again, the entire value proposition, the entire utility of a domain name is connecting somebody's intent with a destination. And if you have two namespaces with the same TLD, then you're forcing browsers to choose one or the other. And there may not be consistency. You know, you may have, you know, let's say the proper incumbent in the legacy namespace, you know, has, I don't know, let's just say XYZ, um, dot XYZ. And then somebody, you know, in, in an alternative namespace, like Handshake, Unstoppable, ENS, doesn't matter, uh, has uh, XYZ as well. And somebody goes out and they register abc.xyz, which by the way, happens to be the, the parent company of Google Alphabet. But if you have abc.xyz in uh, uh, the legacy space and you have, uh, you know, I can governed uh, TLD and you have uh, abc.xyz as a handshake domain, which currently cannot exist because as you mentioned, you know, these legacy TLDs were all reserved, um, thankfully. Um, but in the future, when I can opens up a new round of TLD applications, it, that's when we are going to be facing potential for uh, name collisions. And so um, I think it is important for uh, legacy TLD holders to come in and claim their decentralized alternative. And I think that forward thinking TLD owners um, would be well served to do so and open it up to people who want to experiment with some of the um, uh, potential uh, opportunities that decentralized alternatives offer that the legacy root zone doesn't, or or is at least more complicated in the legacy root zone, such as payments and wallets. I mean, I think it would be awesome that if I get a you know dot horse uh, domain name, you know, if I, I you know let's just say I've got a you know investment firm, it's called Black Horse, right? and I want to have Black dot Horse, and uh, uh, that's great, and I've got my homepage at Black dot Horse on the legacy root. Uh, but I want to be able to accept crypto payments. And so now I've, you know, dot horse has gone in and they've claimed their dot horse on the handshake TLD. And so now uh, because I own block dot black dot horse, that allows me to get my decentralized, you know, equivalent. And so I've got black dot horse on the HNS hand, uh, HNS blockchain. And now you can send me payments to my, uh, uh, to my, you know, black dot horse uh, wallet. And uh, that can be my, uh, uh, you know, uh, online identity. And I can use it in ways that I can't use the sort of legacy domain. And so I think that that's, you know, a tremendous opportunity for legacy root. Uh, again, it, it's also a cautionary tale for the community in the handshake space that, you know, be very careful. We need to be very prudent about name collisions going forward. And, um, um, you know, uh, that could be, um, you know, the greatest threat, I think, to um, the future of, of any of these alternatives um, is, is, is naming collisions. So we have to be very prudent about it. Um, but yeah, let's see, let's go on okay, to another I'm here. I I a blockchain extension. Sorry? I I had some tech issues, but I'm trying to help you out with the question. So, um, so, um, okay. What's your favorite blockchain domain extension? <laughs> That's a great, great question. Um, let's see. So my favorite one that we own is dot escrow. Um, I think that dot escrow is a really exciting, um, uh, opportunity for the future of sort of decentralized trade. Um, particularly, you know, when it comes to digital assets, um, escrow becomes somewhat irrelevant, right? You have smart contracts that allow for sort of, um, you know, uh, simultaneous swaps of, 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 you know, whether it's a uh, currency or another digital asset for an equivalent digital asset. So, um, but when you talk about non-digital assets and the ability to create, um, you know, uh, decentralized escrow sort of, um, um, 
let's say, touchless escrow, so to speak, um, uh, a decentralized escrow alternative is is pretty exciting. So, I'm, so I'm, I think that's probably the favorite one that I own. In terms of the ones that I sort of wish I had gotten, um, yeah, Dot Mushrooms is up there. Just more, more, or you know, yeah, it's up there. Well, not because it's the most valuable, just because of uh, personal reasons. It's uh, it's um, a subject I'm I'm quite uh, uh, fond of. So, uh, moving on to another question: What are your thoughts on domain names in other languages? Uh, you, if you go to domainsherpacom slash forward slash sailor s a y l o r, uh, you'll see a, a a three hour or so two two and a half three hour interview that I did with Michael Saylor, who has become quite infamous in the crypto world because of his um, extremely large investment in uh, Bitcoin and um, his extraordinary dedication to Bitcoin and, uh, and the Bitcoin community. And um, uh, back before he became a ubiquitous name in the crypto world, um, he was uh, a hardcore domain investor uh, to, to an extent. And um, I would say understood the value proposition of domain names um, better than most or almost anyone. And um, there is an, ex you know, the, the interview that I gave with him, I would say is, is, is sort of my uh, crown achievement in terms of conversations that I've had in the domain uh, space in my entire career. And I would encourage everybody to go watch that. And one of the points that was discussed at length in that interview was the idea of language. And um, I don't remember exactly the numbers that he discussed, but it's in the, a, a shocking amount of the of, of, of the world's commerce. I want to say that it's like 70 percent of the world's commerce is conducted in English. Um, and so um, at the end of the day, you know, my experience, you know, uh, is consistent with that, 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 you know, the vast majority of domain name sales that we've made in the aftermarket are in the English language. Um, and so I would expect that trend to be the same in the decentralized, uh, domain space. And, um, that's not to say that alternative language domains are not valuable, but, um, they're not going to be as readily liquid and they're not likely to be as valuable as, uh, English language simply because of the amount of commerce and the number of people worldwide um, who are connected to the internet and speak uh, the English language as a first or second language. Um, so, Andrew, thanks for your great talk. Given how you feel about dot last names, how do you feel about dot place name TLDs? Um, I, I like dot place names. Um, you know, I think, you know, having a dot New York, a dot Chicago, you know, it, it, these are these are cool TLDs. They're, they're useful. Um, again, you know, you run into some potential for um, name collisions in the future, um, but uh, as well as, you know, some some of these TLDs are already taken in, in you know, ICANN legacy TLDs. But, uh, um, you know, on a more micro level, I, I really like it. I like place names. You know, I would caution people. Uh, place names, you know, we call them geos in the, in the domain space. We call them geo domains. Um, they are um, very enticing. They, they're sexy. You know, people get excited about them. P one of one of the ways that we um, as humans identify ourselves is very much by place. Um, and so place is a very important attribute um, and it lends itself to value. But one of the cautions that I will, um, um, you know, uh, say uh, is that nobody to this day has really found a great way of monetizing um, geo domains. And so it's, it's, you know, even some of the best geo domains in the world, they continue to sort of turn over. Um, you know, we just sold Iowa.com. And, uh, you know, I know that Arizona.com just sold and California.com just sold. And, you know, the thing is, is it's very difficult to get your arms around these things and, and, and monetize them. And so, um, you know, I, I, I like them. I do. And uh, I've owned many geo domains, um, but I always end up sort of just letting them go when a, when a, when a, when a buyer comes along and wants it more than me, because they're ultimately difficult to develop and monetize um, into a business. But um, but they make good domain names and uh, they have a purpose, particularly in the real estate world or in the in the news media world. Um, OK, another question. 
um, in between now and full browser adoption, can't handshake partner with common browser extensions like Adblock where they can resolve handshake domains in addition to their function. So that's absolutely true. Um, you know, we've seen things come and go in the past though, uh, you know, and they require people to do those types of uh, integrations. The, 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 you know, people just don't do it. You know, people aren't going, except for the hardcore enthusiasts, the people in the community itself, nobody's going to go and make that adjustment. Nobody's going to add, you know, uh, change their, 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 their resolution IP address in their browser. Nobody's going to, you know, uh, create, you know, get the add ons. It, it just, it just doesn't happen. I mean, just if history is, 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 um, you know, going to dictate the future, people just aren't going to do it. And so, you know, we don't want to sort of rely on that. We don't want to sort of rest on our laurels of, oh, we, you know, you, all you got to do is use this resolver, et cetera. You, we really need mainstream browser adoption in order for us to ever be able to sort of put our flag in the ground um, and say, okay, we made it. Um, in order to ever stop looking over your shoulder, uh, I think we need mainstream browser adoption. I don't think that there's any compromise that will suffice. I think that um, without mainstream browser adoption at some point in the future, um, you know, the, the project is a failure. Um, what's your opinion of emoji TLDs? You know, I, emojis are an interesting thing. I, I, um, I've owned a few. I actually just recently sold the dot mushroom, uh, uh, um, no, not dot mushroom. Sorry. The mushroom dot WS, uh, domain name. Um, for, I, I don't, you know, I, I think actually I wasn't supposed to announce the price, but it, you know, pretty good amount. And I was very excited about that. It was the first emoji domain sale I've ever made. Not that I've, I, I think I've only ever owned two emoji domains, but, um, you know, I, I, I kind of like the idea of an emoji domain extension. I think they're really useful and cool and let's say, um, meme worthy for social media. Um, you know, I do not see them as being a good alternative for a company name. I don't see them as being a good alternative for like sort of mainstream use, but I do think that they have a place. I do think that they can be utilized again in social media, in marketing campaigns. And so, you know, um, uh, advertising, I, I think that they have a place and they're cute and they're fun and they get people to text a thousand words. And so if, you know, a really clever combination of emojis, um, can be really interesting. Um, you know, I saw somebody, uh, I was in a, a WhatsApp chat group the other day and somebody was talking about, you know, how do we create, um, you know, uh, something about a rabbit hole and, and, and somebody posted the, you know, the black hole with a little rabbit and it was like, yeah, that's great. You know, that, that, that says everything it needs to. Um, and so I, I like them, but, uh, they lend themselves to a lot of confusion Nobody can type them. And so it's really only good to be used as a, um, a live link, a hyperlink that people can click on in order to go, you know, find something else. Um, nobody's going to type them. It's, it's, it's just, it's too difficult. Um, let's see. Uh, how many handshake domains do I own? Uh, I think I've probably got a few hundred at this point. Um, you know, I've been, um, uh, I, you know, I wish in the earlier days, um, of the auctions, um, you know, just to be clear, I I've been participating. Um, let's see, I'm actually going to go check. Uh, let's see what was the first one I ever bought. Uh, just want to see when I think, let's see. If... So I started participating um, in the auctions back in, uh, September of 2020. So it's been, you know, I don't know, eight months. Um, it seems like much longer than that, but, uh, time flies, uh, during, uh, uh, during a uh, pandemic. Um, the first domain I bought was, uh, dot seafood, I think. Um, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, I also lied. Sorry. I'm going even further back. So I actually started, I knew it was earlier than that. I started in May of 2020. Um, I knew, I knew it was earlier than that. So it's been just about a year and I started in May in 2020. And the first handshake domain I got was 
dot dominios, which is uh, do domain names in Spanish. So, you know, back to the point about uh, alternative language domain extensions, um, you know, I did buy the dot dominios extension, um, which I thought, you know, was, was good for a uh, potential registrar, um, you know, for handshake domains in the future for the Spanish language, um, or, you know, who knows, but if you're going to start somewhere, might as well start with, uh, the word domains in regardless of what language, um, let's see what else we got. Do you think, emoji, no, uh, do you think emoji can be the best NFT art that also can't have fake replicates? which increases its value. Um, you know, I, again, I think unique ways of combining um, emojis to say something, tell a story um, is interesting, but, but, you know, whether or not that's art, you know, I, I think that's maybe at the fringe, um, but, you know, I, I don't think it's anything to hang your coat. What do you think needs to be done going forward in order to protect the brands? Um, great question. So again, I think it just comes down to self-governance. You know, um, we don't have arbitration mechanisms. Um, you know, there's, I, I, it would be very contentious, I think, for me to even propose that there should be one. Um, I'd probably get chased out of the handshake community. But, you know, I think that there, there, there is a need for something. There's a need for some um, governance around trademark abuse, you know, if you want mainstream adoption, you need to have an open door for brands to come in and be able to claim their domain and, and utilize it and get their existing customer base into the community, right? Um, and if you're holding, you know, the dot IBMs of the world hostage, um, you know, I, I know IBM is one of the largest companies in the world and they're obviously their dot IBM is going to be reserved, but, you know, I'm just using that as a, front of mind example, but there are thousands of brands or millions of brands or thousands, tens of thousands of brands out there whose domain name was not reserved and on the handshake blockchain and whose domain may be owned by some of us in the, in, in this community. And, you know, what I'm saying is I think it would be well served to, um, you know, give it to them, whether that's at cost or as a donation, obviously it depends on what you've got into it. But, you know, we want those people coming into the community. We want them to claim their domain and we want them to utilize it. We don't want to be sort of holding them over the coals and saying, look, you know, you got to pay me, you know, 500,000 handshake, you know, to get this thing. And they're like, well, how do I buy handshake? You know, you don't want that. You want it to, you want it to be as seamless and smooth and easy a transition for anybody with the open mind that says, I want to claim my handshake domain. I have an existing business. I have an existing user base. I have an existing fan base in the legacy domain system. And I want to come over, even if it's only at the fringe, even if it's only for payments, even if it's only for identity, I want to create a little sandbox with my community to come and start utilizing the handshake world. Um, we want to embrace them with open arms. We want to do everything we can to roll out the red carpet for anybody that's willing to make that migration at whatever level. Um, and we don't want to create hurdles for them. We don't want to create, you know, um, um, uh, you know, any, we don't, we don't want to create any inhibition, even, even psychological inhibition of like, Oh, what a pain in the butt that is. And, Oh, here's this, you know, somebody in their mom's basement that owns my domain name. And I've, spent my career building this business and they think they're going to rake me over the coals and hold me hostage for my domain name, you know, forget them. We don't want that. Right. I, I've been there. Right. That's the story of my career. Brands have a bad impression of the domain community in general, particularly the legacy domain community. And so, um, you know, I've been fighting that fight for a very long time. And, uh, you know, we're finally starting to make headway where, you know, we're not perceived domain investors that is being perceived as um, you know, the troll in their mom's basement, who's just holding people hostage, um, you know, to fulfill their dreams by getting the domain names. And people are understanding that these things can be um, extremely valuable and they have become very valuable. And at the end of the day, they are the bedrock on which the world's most valuable economy is being built. And the future crypto economy in particular um, but hopefully the, the, the sort of legacy economy will move 
uh, to a decentralized, uh, uh, you know, in internet architecture. So um, we want to just make it our business. It's in all of our best interest to do whatever we can to help make that happen and not inhibit it. Um, I had another thought as I was saying that, and now I've sort of lost it, but it was, it was, uh, it was a good point. Um, um, let's see. Yeah. How are you rate the following TLDs in terms of keywords, peekaboo, cryptify? I mean, you know, again, I think this goes back to hey, what I was true. saying. Um, we're coming up on time, but, um, this okay. will be a, like a great, uh, last question to, um, wrap up the session. This is awesome. Great. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what I was saying about the left of the dot and the right of the dot. And it's really important to distinguish what makes something great on the left of the dot versus the right of the dot. Dot peekaboo, dot cryptofy. Not sure they make great domain extensions. I'm not sure they make great TLDs, the thing to the left, uh, to the right of the dot. Um, because what goes in, what goes to the left of dot peekaboo, right? What goes to the left of dot cryptofy? Maybe if you've got a company called peekaboo, maybe if you've got a company called cryptofy, Maybe they want to use sort of it, sort use it as a brand TLD. But even if you look at the legacy root zone where we've got a five year track record of brand TLDs, we're not seeing much innovation there. We're not seeing a lot of adoption there. We're not seeing brands embracing um, the, this brand TLD and utilizing it in meaningful ways. And so I'm not sure those make great, you know, uh, domain alternatives. So anyways, thank you to everybody. This was awesome. I hope that uh, uh, I added some value here. I hope that, um, you know, you guys learned something. I hope that, you know, my perspective coming from the legacy uh, domain world, you know, helps you think about the way you invest in and build. Because again, you know, uh, value is driven by utility. And I think we're all here to extract and create value. And so if we want to do that, this community needs to just double down and double down on the ecosystem, build more applications, build this community even more and, um, you know, offer people real utility value by moving or adopting or uh, in, in, in parallel uh, adopting a uh, decentralized alternative. So thank you. And if anybody uh, has any further questions, reach out to me, Andrew, at mediaoptions.com. And uh, thank you very much.